Hi everyone, and welcome to today's episode of Channel Chat. I'm Alicia Fioletta, Senior Editor of Channel Marketer Report, and I have joining me Gary Griffiths, who's co-founder and CEO of Trapit, as well as Patricia Hume, who is president of Trapit. Guys, thanks so much for taking the time. Oh. It's great to be here. Thanks, Alicia. Yeah, Alicia, thanks very much. This is a great opportunity to tell the channel how content marketing might be able to help their efforts. Yeah, absolutely. So to start out, obviously, content marketing is a super hot topic now, both in the B2B world as well as more specifically the channel marketing world. So, um, you know, to start out our conversation, Gary, I'd love to hear your perspective on what content marketing trends are are brewing in the industry now because, you know, we've really seen the shift from content marketing being a nice to have to really an imperative. So I'd love to hear what you're seeing on that front. Yeah, for sure. There's, um, as a matter of fact, there's a number of statistics, I think, that make that point that, that we find interesting. Uh, for example, did you know that 27 million pieces of content get shared every day? That's from uh, AOL Nielsen. Or that um, the man metric says that 78% of CMOs think that content is the future of marketing. Google will tell you that just in the last couple of years, people who are searching on content marketing is up 400%. So it's definitely a topic that is of interest. And then finally, according to um, to CMI, 73% of B2B marketers have someone in charge of content marketing. So it's become a position that people can't, can't live without. So yeah, it's, it's increasingly important, definitely a trend, definitely something that is here to say and that uh, the market marketeers around the country, around the world really are embracing. Um, so I think you get the point. This is, um, it's an imperative, as you say. Mm-hmm. That's great. And, and you hit on a few key stats that really talked about the um, sheer amount of content flooding the web, right? I mean, it, it's a good thing, but it's also probably a challenge, right? I mean, is standing out an issue in the industry, Pat? You seem really, um, you know, entrenched in that uh that, that area of the world, since you're constantly keeping tabs on how much content is out there, you know, curation, syndication. So what, what are you seeing? Is, is standing out an ongoing issue? Sure it is. You know, Gary talked to you about 27 million pieces of content a day. When you step back and analyze that on an annual basis, that's 10 billion pieces of content a year. And, you know, you talk about a flood of content. That's definitely a flood. It's almost absurd, the amount of information. And, you know, we know that the reason, the top reason audiences follow brands is because whatever it is that the brand is doing from a content perspective, if it's interesting and compelling, you know, you're going to get an audience following. So the the need to stand out is is really important. Some of the basic things, you know, I I do marketing here at at Trapid in my role as president as well as sales. So as marketing, I have to think about what are we going to do around content marketing? And so I think there's some basic things people have to think about in order to stand out. And that is, number one, make sure you have a content strategy. I mean, it may sound basic and simple to say build a content strategy, but if you don't do that and you're doing things haphazardly, then you're not really thinking through how do I stand out, how do I reach my audience, right? Secondly, we hear this all the time, but storytelling is imperative, right? Um, In the old days when, when we were doing marketing, we would talk about our products and it, you know, it was more about what we did, how we did it, maybe our value proposition. But we really didn't tell the story. Um, and, and storytelling is a way to in, increase engagement and interest. Becoming an authority in what you're doing. So the ability to be a thought leader is important. Um, I think the, the fact that people will keep coming back to uh, a brand that is educating them and helping them and and helping them become aware of whatever challenges or pain points they're feeling in their business. And then you need to also think about where you're gonna share your content. And don't be afraid to be creative around using video, using text, using audio, you know, co-mingle things. I mean, we're doing a, a video today because it's important for people, they wanna see things once in a while versus just read it, right? And I think adding emotion um, helps people believe in you more. You become more real, right? So I think it's this combination of making sure your content strategy blends created as well as curated content 
so that you can really do an appropriate story, surround it with compelling facts, become the authority, and then publish it out across multiple endpoints, ensuring that you know, you're know you reaching a broad enough base of your audience. Does that make sense? Yeah, absolutely. I think those are a lot of really great core principles, um, you know, that businesses across different industries can, uh, can really follow. And I think that's sort of the disconnect there. They see content marketing as this big undertaking. So they're not quite sure, you know, where to start and, and how to make those steps and almost build up their uh, strategy, which in turn will help build up their arsenal. So, you know, with that, Gary, I mean, are there any other tips or best practices you'd like to share, you know, in terms of how businesses can, you know, know, combat that content flood, so to speak, and stand out more successfully? Well, let me, uh, let me uh, pick, up, pick up that thread where, where Patricia left it off. The, um, when, you think about, when you think about social media and you think about posting content to social media, it sounds pretty simple. You know, well, there's, there's, there's any number of social networks and we've got content, so we're just going to blast it out across that media. But it's really not that simple because this truly is a case where one size does not fit all. If you take, if you take uh, Facebook, for example, Facebook in understanding your audience is a place where people are there probably more interested in the culture of your company than in a hardcore business message. So if you're using Facebook as a channel to reach prospects or reach customers, uh, it's pretty imperative that you think about lifestyle content. Uh, that yeah, you want to blend some of your business content in, but you've got you've got to couch that with some lifestyle information that's going to capture that Facebook audience. And that's of course of course much different than LinkedIn, for example, where your your content probably should be pretty much devoid of any lifestyle content. This is where people come to learn about business, to learn about your company, and hopefully to learn about your brand. So things that might be of interest on LinkedIn as opposed to Facebook would maybe be things, changes in the legal climate that may impact the channel's business or their customers, or uh, of course, new trends that are affecting the industry. Um, and then if you take, take Twitter, Twitter can be a combination of both. It really is, is understanding who is out there? Who's on Twitter? What are they doing? What, where are they following you and how do you engage with them? So it's very important as you're looking at content, content marketing, that you understand your audience and you talk to them, you teach them, you reach them where they live with the kind of content that you expect that they want to see. Yeah, and Gary, when you're talking about all these different sharing vehicles, it's evident that, especially in regards to social media, each network has its own value. Um, you know, it, it's more beneficial for certain types of content, for sharing different types of content. And, um, you know, the tone probably differs, too, as, as you go across those those networks. So, um, you know, that sort of streamlines into the practice or, you know, the, the art and science of content curation and syndication which we've been covering a lot on Channel Marketer Report because it helps bridge that gap, right, between the content being created by the vendor and, and you know, delivering it off to the partners and in turn the end users. So, Pat, why don't you share a little bit more about, you know, the role that content uh, curation and syndication is playing, you know, in general, I mean, not just in, in social media. Yeah, you know, if we think about uh, curating content and content strategy, let's talk about how vendors today deal with delivering content to their partners, right? I've been in channels for about 25 years, and I know that it's been a universal truth that it's difficult for business partners to uh, leverage all of the content that the vendor provides in their marketing activity. So whether the vendor is delivering a campaign in a box, delivering you know an, an access to an internet where content resides, it's still very challenging for the business partner to get the kind of content he or she needs in order to, to really do their marketing efforts efficiently and proficiently. And I think when you start to think about, uh, to Gary's point, one size does not fit all, business partners come in all shapes and sizes, 
their business models differ to whether, you know, predicated on what their value proposition is to their end customer. And many, many times our business partners are local, right? They're, they're local guys. They serve a certain radius um, of business, right? They have a certain book of business that typically can be hyper-local. So whether you're a local partner or a regional partner or a national partner, getting content that is going to resonate with your audience that makes sense for your business model it isn't realistic to think that the vendor can provide all that content, right? That, that created content. So what we've been doing, we've been talking to channel companies, companies that go to market with, through a channel. We've been telling them, you know, think about your content management strategy to your partners. And uh, the proper mix of curated and created content is fundamentally important because your business partners now can if you would stand out because they can now use not just the created content of the vendor, but content that's been curated for them um, and by them. Right. So we created this concept of multi-tier curation and we can tell you more about, you know, sort of the importance about multi-tier curation as it relates to the partner community. But the intent here is, let's get the right content into the hands of the business partner and make sure that it is really resonates with their marketing needs, their marketing activities, so that it they can then go out and compel and engage their audience. You know? And I think there's a win-win when you think about the balance of created and curated content down to the channel. <clears throat> Absolutely, because if you think about, you know, making content available, you know, accessible to partners, I mean, it's one thing to just give them the content, but it's almost a matter of, okay, how do you empower them to use that content to their advantage, you know, whether it's through social networks or, you know, if they're crafting a whole campaign around it. So, so how can vendors do that? successfully how can they not just say oh here's you know a white paper an infographic and an ebook you know go to town i mean how can they really streamline or facilitate that process and make sure they're getting full value out of that content that they're supposed to yeah so so let me go back to this concept of multi-tier curation you know we talk to these large companies and they say it's really important that when content is being shared with the partner community, that it's content that is still true to our brand, right? We want to secure our voice. We want it to maintain its integrity, right? So it's not, it can't be a free for all. So the idea that we talk to our, our uh, you know, the, the larger channel companies, companies that leverage channels, we go in and we say, look, you can curate content that is consistent with your brand. You can curate it around um, you know, the products you serve, your competition, whatever, whatever topic is important to you, you have control. Now, you can pass that content, publish that content um, into an intranet or into a, 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 a mobile application, whatever the, whatever the publishing endpoint is. And then your partners can get access to that content, all right? Now, um, for some of our customers, they actually then allow the partner to curate right? Their own content. So um, Gary will explain to you a little bit later how that works with Trapit. But at the end of the day, the brand has now the ability to pass information that's true to their voice. The business partner can pick and choose the content he or she wants to augment their marketing activities, right? And they can commingle the created white paper, with some industry knowledge that has been curated and I think have a much more compelling marketing campaign for their audience. Yeah. Um, and then when you take it this step further, where now the business partner can actually very simply curate his or her own content. So if I'm a local partner in, um, you know, Cincinnati, Ohio, there's certain news and events and things that are happening around Cincinnati that I'd like to be able to leverage into my marketing campaign because it's going to be more relevant to my audience, right? In the Cincinnati market, there's things that are going on that may not be going on in L.A. So I don't want the L.A. content. I want the Cincinnati content, right? And that, that gives the business partner ability to stand out, to be more compelling, right? Draw more leads, close more business, right? <clears throat> Yeah, a lot of really great points there, Pat. And I think, you know, there's something to be said about not only being relevant to 
your specific industry, you know, keeping tabs on what's happening in the marketplace, you know, whether it's high level trends or new research reports, but that element of getting personal, right? Like you said, understanding your community, what's happening and trying to spin that um, to turn it into a, a bigger conversation. So Gary, with that, I mean, you know, what role is Trapit playing in this uh, whole era of content curation and syndication? How are you guys helping organizations across the channel uh, really maximize their uh, maximize their presence and overall engagement online? Sure, Alicia. Um, I like to I like to use the analogy of the needle in the haystack. In other words, if we if we go back to when the internet was young, think of that haystack being the size of a coffee cup. So it's pretty easy to find a needle in a coffee cup, even with a bunch of hay in there. But now it's gotten it's gotten so big. Think of now the um, that haystack is is filling up the Pacific Ocean. Uh, the needle is still there, but it's more and more difficult to find. And and so the analogy is if if you're a business, if you're a channel partner, finding the information that is really relevant to you is increasingly difficult. And we've the last few minutes we've been talking about this flood of information and how difficult it is. We we think that trap it is the most advanced and intuitive way of discovering those needles, discovering the gems that are really important to you, and then giving you the ability to curate it and deliver it to the channel of your choice, to the endpoint of your choice, if you will, whether it's a social uh, social network or whether it's a microsite or whether it's a iPad application. It doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. Flipboard, any really anywhere that you think your audience is going to be consuming content. Now we do this, our customers create traps and a trap can be any kind of a topic, anything of interest. It can be very specific. It could be the channel report or it could be very broad. It could be uh, channel marketing or it could be digital culture. It really doesn't matter. Trap it will go out and find the information. It will deliver it to you. And as you use it, it gets smarter about what's really important to you. Now, it's really important to discover. It's really important to curate. It's really important to deliver content, but we're all in this business for return on investment. And therefore, what we also do is provide analytics so you can see your content, you can see where it's going, you can see where it's being shared, you can see how it's being used, and you make adjustments on that. It's, wow, this this content on Hadoop is doing really well. We need to put more of this out and maybe less of the content about high energy storage. So... Um, we, we believe that, that leveraging content tools like Trapid are, are very important. It's all about rising your brand, your name, above the noise and being relevant, being the authority in your space. That's great. That's a really great. awesome really? breakdown of Trapid, you know, your positioning in the space. And I think it's enlightening and almost reassuring to folks in the channel that there are solutions out there to help make the process a little less painful that then they they, con they consider it. I mean, you know, content marketing is becoming such an important part of um, businesses today. It helps them stand out in the marketplace. It helps them build meaningful uh, relationships and have relevant conversations. But it's just a matter of, you know, bridging that gap uh, between the vendors and their partners, which continues to be a challenge for a lot of companies. So, um, you know, thanks again to both of you for taking the time out, for sharing your thoughts on the content marketing space, obviously the channel challenges and, and how, how uh, Trap It's helping to address them. It was a great conversation. So thank you both. Thanks, Alicia. Thanks, Alicia. Great to be with you. And uh, thanks everyone out there for watching. Have a great day.